Hey everyone, welcome to Wetcode. In this video, we're going to learn about Webpack entry points and output. So let's start off with entry points. So entry points tell Webpack where to look when starting to build a bundle. In other words, they are the starting point for Webpack to begin building dependency graphs. Webpack does this by using the entry point to figure out what modules and libraries the entry point depends on, then what its dependencies depend on, and so on. So there are different ways and syntaxes for defining an entry point. Nevertheless, all are specified with the entry key. Let's create a Webpack configuration file and specify the entry point of the application. So here, we are telling Webpack to start the bundling process using the path .source-index.js. This is also the default value for entry. So if nothing was specified for entry, then, dot, then this path .source-index.js would be used anyway. Before we continue, let's actually create this entry point. And now to work with bundle creation some more, let's create a simple service called Witcode service inside a folder called services. Inside this file, export a symbol class called Witcode service. Now, inside our index.js file, let's import the service. Now let's create a simple npm build script to run webpack inside our package.json file. Now when we run this script with npm run build, webpack will use the configuration file and see that the entry point requires the wit code service and go from there when building the dependency graph. So let's run webpack with npm run build. So when we run Webpack, we can see the bundle Webpack creates is a file called main.js inside a folder called dist. So we have main.js here, and we have dist. This is the default output location for Webpack. Output tells Webpack how and where to write the bundled files to. By default, this is a folder called dist, and for JavaScript, a file called main.js. However, we can configure Webpack's output with the output key. Let's change the default output name to bundle.js inside a folder called myOutput. This can be done with the file name and path keys respectively. So this configuration tells Webpack to output the bundled JavaScript code into a file called bundle.js in a folder called myOutput. We also specify clear to true to empty out this distribution folder before creating these files. To demonstrate, run npm run build once more. And what we get is error output of the console. I believe that is because it is clean as opposed to clear. And what we get is my output and the file bundle.js. And we can also see it's minified due to the default mode being production, but we'll be going over that in a later video. So now we've gone over the basics of input and output, but let's go over multi-main entry. We can also give Webpack multiple entry points or an array of file paths. To do so, we simply provide the entry key inside our configuration file, an array of file path strings. So this is called multi-main entry, and it's useful for working with dependent files whose graph dependencies we want merged together. To demonstrate, create a file called whatcode service 2.js inside services. Now create a file called index 2.js. Then import and log what the wit code is cool variable. So 
So now if we run webpack using the configuration file and then run the bundled output file with node, we will see both outputs. So we have because inside index.js, we are creating wit code service and saying hello, which will log these two statements, which we can see here. But we're also now with multi-main entry bundling a second one where we're just logging out what code is cool, which is here, which comes from a separate dependency graph from index2.js and with code service2.js. So basically both bundled chunks were merged into one. And now let's talk about entry point object syntax. So providing a string or array of strings to the entry key is basically used for a nice quick setup. However, we can have more configuration capabilities by providing an object to the entry key. So each key provided to this object will be its own separate bundle. The name of each bundle will be the key value. So here, the name of the bundle will be index, and the path to the entry point is dot dash source dash index dot js. Let's also provide multiple bundle names to this object. Now when we build the application with npm run build, we are given two output files named index.js and index2.js. However, if we check the console, we can see multiple chunks emit assets for the same file name bundle, which basically means we have output with one file name called bundle, but we're trying to produce two bundles. And this is because unlike Webpack input, where there can be multiple entry points, Webpack can only have one output. And therefore, as we have the output set to one file called bundle.js, we need to use substitution so that multiple files are created with their own name. So adding name here, we'll add the name of the file, which will be index2 and index. And so now in our output, we can see index.bundle.js and index2.bundle.js. But so this name substitution here will be the file name, which here is the object keys. And we can even further customize the entry point by supplying an object to the entry point as opposed to a string. One of these options is file name, which specifies the name of each output file. Here, we name the output file to mycoolfile.js for .-source-index.js. And note that this will override the file name provided in output. The import key here specifies the modules to be loaded at startup. So after running npm run build, we should now have a JavaScript file called mycoolfile.js. And if we look inside my output, we have it right here. And now just a little more in depth on what using these two keys here means. So the object entry configuration we supplied to Webpack is actually telling Webpack we want two different dependency graphs or that we have two separate entry points. A use case for separate entry points could be multiple HTML files and we want to add say index.js to one and index.2 or index2.js to the other. But so this is my video on Webpack entry points. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try and get back to you. But besides that, thank you for liking and subscribing today and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.